Hi guys and welcome to another episode of Kabir Considers. In this video, we're going to react to Elon Musk donating $45 million a month to Donald Trump's uh, political campaign. That is just an insane amount of money. I mean, it is just a huge, huge amount. I've heard that it costs upwards of a billion dollars to run for presidency because of the marketing, the, the advertising, all of the people that you need to hire, the strategists, everybody involved. So it's a very expensive endeavor. But 45 million, I mean, that just shows you how much faith Elon has in, in Trump. Or I suppose it shows you how little faith he has in Biden. I don't, it depends on your outlook on things. Um, it's just, it's quite interesting to me, you know, because I, I read recently that, that Biden's lost his, one of his biggest, um, sponsors, one of his biggest, uh, financial donors, which, you know, that coupled with this news is just another, you know, terrible situation for Biden. I, it's just looking really difficult to him, for him. The path to victory is just shrinking for him. It is a new hour here on Live Now from Fox, 3 p.m. out on the East Coast, 12 o'clock on the West Coast as we continue to bring you some other top stories that we are following for you. And this was a big one. Wall Street Journal had this exclusive uh, where Elon Musk, he is going to be putting $45 million a month to a Trump new super PAC. So I want to break all this down here. We do have uh, one of the reporters here with us right now on live now from Fox, Dana Matatoli with the Wall Street Journal. Thanks so much for joining us here. This is big, big news with Elon. Yeah, it's a giant story. We've seen this flirtation between Elon Musk and Donald Trump for months now. It was sort of like a will he, won't he come out and endorse him? Is he going to get involved in... I mean, to be honest, unbanning Trump from Twitter. Do you remember when Twitter banned Trump? And then I think the first thing Elon did when he bought it and obviously renamed it X was unbanning Trump. So I think there's always been, you know... Uh, an affinity between the two of them in the re-election efforts and he is in a big way our story answered that question you know elon is part of this pack called the america pack and he's the biggest donor he's pledging 45 million dollars a month and they're going to be focused on the ground game in swing states and you know signing up voters trying to get voters to side with you know president trump and trying to get them to request mail-in ballots and vote early yeah, it, it all seemed like on Saturday afternoon, uh, early evening, uh, when we saw what happened on Saturday, really the whole country and the world saw what happened with Donald Trump and the attempted assassination. And then immediately after, he goes on X and says, you know what, I am going to put this out there. I'm supporting Donald Trump for president. And now it seems like it's this ripple effect, and he's going to be not only supporting him, but in a big, big way with I would love someone to give me a, a rough breakdown on why it costs so much to run for presidency. Uh, you know, I know it, it's expensive, but over a billion dollars, like $45 million a month. And that's just one of the, the, the packs that the reporter said that Trump is going to have. That's it. That's huge. Like, why does it need to, why do you need to spend this much money? You know, what's fascinating is, that's right, Musk came out right after the shooting and the assassination attempt and publicly endorsed Donald Trump. But what was going on in the background was with this America PAC happened weeks earlier, but it was able to keep secret. Musk was part of this since June and pledged this money to that effort. And, you know, I think there's a sense that from the people involved in the PAC, which includes other tech CEOs and venture capitalists. So there's this real shift to the right there. But there's a sense among those people that the Democrats have historically been better at the ground game, have historically been better at door knocking and I having those see. conversations. I see. So this is trying to level the playing field, I suppose. And they want to combat some of that. And then I want to ask you, too, on your re reporting here, is there any thought if Donald Trump does win once again, would Elon Musk uh, maybe have an advisor role within the White House? Uh, you what have you been so. hearing? I mean, surely. We reported a few months back that Elon Musk had been involved in these 
small meetings, some of them with other high ranking Republicans um, to talk about the state of the country and maybe getting involved in, you know, coming over to Donald Trump's side. One of them even included a meeting with Donald Trump where the idea of Musk having an informal sort of advisory role was floated. You know, Elon runs six companies, um, is the world's richest person. So I don't think he would ever take a formal sort of role in the presidency because it would mean having to cash out of those companies. But you could certainly see a world in which he might be an informal advisor of some. Of course, I mean, $45 million a month, that buys you a hell of a lot of influence. He already has Donald Trump's ear, for sure. For sure, they're already in communication, no doubt about it. Sort, especially given his perch in corporate America. And uh, Elon Musk was making even more news this week where when he decided uh, he is done with California. Yeah, that's right. He announced, I think it was yesterday, that he would move uh, two of his companies, I think X and SpaceX, from California to other states. Um, and this was about a new... Uh, probably Texas. There's already a gigafactory in Texas, isn't there? I reckon he'll probably move to Texas. Um, law in California that doesn't require schools to tell parents if their child is changing their gender orientation. Wow. He's really been on the forefront of speaking out against diversity and inclusion efforts. And so this wasn't that surprising. And, uh, you know, going back here to the big support there for Donald Trump, uh, when you look back at his ex postings, I mean, he was always teetering on uh, the going full support for Donald Trump. Uh, but um, when do you think, OK, if this shooting didn't happen, when do you think this would have been formally uh, announced with the uh, Super PAC? Yeah, it's a great question. So the Super PAC filing came out on uh, sorry, July 15th, they had oh, to announce some of the members there. Elon was not named there, but a lot of his friends were, you know, Joe Lonsdale, who's the co-founder of Palantir was listed, the Winklevoss twins, um, some other very prominent venture capitalists from Sequoia, but he was not there. Um, but from what my understanding is, he's been very actively involved in this pack since June. And, you know, there will be more disclosures that they have to make as months go on quarterly. And I expect to see him listed in those ones. That's uh, definitely, definitely interesting. It'll really show, showcasing uh, just how much uh, uh, the election is definitely, definitely heating up. Oh, but man, that is a, um, you know, I have to, this is a big piece of news for Donald Trump, man. It just feels like um, ever since the shooting, ever since the debate, like the momentum has just like gathered so much pace for Trump. Just for, you know, you have to, you know, just being honest, like forget whose side you're on. Just trying to look at this objectively. Since that first debate where Biden made that, that host of mistakes, the momentum, like that gave Trump a boost, the debate. Then the shooting gave Trump a massive boost. Um, you know, now this, $45 million a month, not just the money, not just the amount of money, but who it's coming from. Elon Musk is this just enigmatic figure. You know, he's just, he's so well known. So for him to publicly endorse Trump to such a degree, because money talks ultimately, is just another thing that's just going to fan that flame for, for Trump. Biden, man, it's, it's for me, it's, it's reaching foregone conclusion territory here. I just, like I say, I, I really have no dog in this fight because I'm not an American citizen. You know, yes, obviously America, things it does has effects worldwide for sure, like the stock market, things like that. But ultimately, you know, the presidency will not directly affect me. But it's just clear as day now. It's looking like it's just going to be a Trump slam dunk. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next one.